Boom. Welcome. Um, wow. Um, we got 75 new subscribers since our last videos. Our last video was the biggest success we've had. 2,400 views, 97 reactions, 40 comments. Um, wow. Um, so exciting. Um, to um have to welcome all the new uh, subscribers and uh, this is Diana Robinson and I'm Martin Contois MC Starman and we got lots of feedback on our astro mandala table everybody was really stoked about that and so um, we're doing a video on the full moon right there the full moon in Sagittarius and the sun in Gemini, so they so you want to go and get this slide? <laughs> you gotta stop moving it. <laughs> oh. So, the Sagittarius full moon, it's going to be on Saturday, June 3rd, that's Pacific Standard Time at 8 42 p.m. So, that's Saturday night. Ah, I believe that's. Oh, yeah, Saturday night. Coining it, time flies. Whether you're having fun or not, time <laughs> flies. And so there's some exciting things on this uh, full moon. We have the continuation of uh, this Jupiter-Mars-Pluto conjunction. Uh, T-square? T-square, yeah, yeah. And then... But the, let's start with the full moon. So the moon in Sagittarius, sun in Gemini, uh, for, with Saturn in Pisces, that forms a mutable T-square. Uh, that red triangle there, that's uh, quite... Um, so what is that saying? Let's flesh that out. Yeah, okay. So mutable T-square, we've got two big T-squares then going on right now. The mutable T square so, to me would be a big change in direction and allowing for things to shift. But Saturn's all about discipline, so this could be interesting. Well, we talked a lot about Saturn and Pisces, right? And yeah. Saturn and Pisces being creating the stable container, the 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 ship that doesn't take water, the boat that doesn't take water. You know, so that's Saturn and Pisces really being disciplined in our spiritual practices mm -hmm. so that we don't become overwhelmed by the storm. And then the sun in Gemini, of course, sun in Gemini is very social. Let's go, let's go. And it moves really fast. And moon in Sagittarius, adventure, adventure, adventure. And Saturn in Pisces is like, okay, uh, do we you know is our boat safe you know is are we safe and uh, are we uh, able to withdraw the uh, you know to um to with withstand the storm and so that's where i got you the time flies you know with sun and gemini and sagittarius and fire um sign of sad you know the moon and sagittarius fire things are really moving fast and then mm. Saturn and Pisces kind of cools things down. Don't forget to write your pages. Don't forget to be disciplined. Don't forget to look after your safe container so you can be happy and, and, and withstand all of this go, 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 go. Um, how's that been feeling for you? It's been a lot. Well, that was one of the issues we talked about together last week is that, you know, it's hard to stay resourced if we don't look after ourselves and just go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. And yet today you were saying, well, I'm just going to have to learn with live with the crash because there's so much going on. And it's the same thing for me. It's like, wow, everything is moving so fast. So that's kind of. So we can expect this le this week leading to the full moon to be quite active and fiery. The so the sun and the moon also engage with Mars in Leo, um, in a 
sextile and trine. And so then Mars and Leo is also very fiery and go, 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 go. And, and then also um, makes an angle the Chiron in Aries. Almost, almost a grand kite. If you look at the chart. Yeah, it's, show them. Yeah, it's almost a grand kite. Uh, I mean, a, 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 a grand trine. We got fire, moon, and Sag. More fire. Mars. Mars that blue line's the trine. And it doesn't quite make it as a blue line to Chiron, but there's the next fire. But uh, we're, you know, so we're going to see that, you know, when Mars moves a little further uh, ahead, we'll have a Mars Chiron trine. And for all intents and purposes, because, you know, all we have to do is have Mars a few degrees, then we have the grand trine. So then that grand trine is close enough to be felt although it's a little bit out of orb. So then more fire and then forming a grand kite with the sun in Gemini Sagittarius. So times are flying and so intense and that's whether we're having fun or not. Yeah, I like how you said here, um, the power of intuition when it comes to Mars and Leo. There's been a lot of talk about intuition lately, and if you're not listening, and things get overwhelming. But if you're listening, somehow it's like easier to get through the storm. <laughs> well, with the moon in Sagittarius, Chiron in Aries, and Leo Mars, you know, fire sign is the fire, the sign of intuition in Union psychology. Very intuitive, you know. the 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 fire sign is moved by a deep intuition. And so then this is a very engaging time. I don't know about you, but I find that a lot of the answers to the questions that have been, you know, dem you know, asking, uh, you know, in my process are starting to become more clear. And I, I think that this full moon will bring a lot of clarity uh, if we can somehow learn the lesson of Saturn and slow down enough to listen. I think slowing down enough to listen mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, yeah. So that's, that's that, that's the full moon. And then we have that Mars, Pluto, uh, Pluto and then now Venus is joining it. And with Jupiter and the nodal axis forming a Pluto, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, nodal axis t square you want to show that on the chart mm -hmm. yeah mars has been there but it's it's like gonna trade off guards with venus here hey well it's gonna be very interesting and every so... night after sunset you're gonna see the first two stars you're gonna see on the southern western side of the horizon you're gonna see bright bright G uh, venus and bright bright mars together and they're going to be moving together for the next month or so. And Venus is going to get closer and closer to Mars. And then she's going to start dropping down. She's going to go retrograde. So we're going to, you know, so that's, you know, that's very visual. It's a beautiful show. Look at it after sunset uh, or, or right. You'll see uh, the first two stars that you see will be Venus and Mars in the south west corner of the sky uh so that's and so now you can see it and both venus and mars are forming an opposition to pluto and they're going to jupiter in the nodal axis the north node so we did this last video that we did was on that mm -hmm. and um a lot of you really liked what it said and it's a powerful message and i think that uh there's a lot of energy in that, a lot of insight into this full moon. Um, and um, time flies, huh? whether yeah. you're having fun or not. <laughs> I think a key thing I want to show here on the chart is it's a Gemini Sagittarius, Sagittarius full moon, Gemini season. And so I always think of Mercury ruling, ruling Gemini. Mm -hmm. 
and so where Mercury's at too, and so I think one little thing we haven't spoke to yet is this beautiful Gemini Uranus conjunction. Well, hopefully beautiful. Well, the the <laughs> that's a it doesn't make any angle to much, huh? It doesn't. It connects to Chiron and it connects to Pluto, mm -hmm. so it may not be lived as much as the rest of the in, insanity, but. Um, you know, and this fast, fast, but that Mercury Uranus conjunction at the end of Taurus, Mercury, I'll show it to you. <laughs> Whoop. So we got Mercury and Uranus, and at the end of Taurus, it's not quite that far, it's like 19 degrees or so. And so, and uh, and then Jupiter real close by, and then forming that T square with jupiter and so not far is mercury uranus now mercury and uranus in conjunction if if you have in your own chart do you have mercury uranus connections they are square okay so yeah. so right. uranus is the universal mind mercury is the personal mind so the mer so then there's a universal mind, personal mind connection. Whenever there's angle in the chart between Mercury and Uranus, my Mercury and Uranus are in quinsunct with each other, 150 degree angle. And so, so and then especially conjunctions. Conjunctions are associated with genius and with really amazing uh, ability to process collective information. You know, there would be someone that would be really good at computer work, a Mercury Uranus conjunction. It it could be genius or it can be madman as well. You know, mad woman. You know, it's like the 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 fine line between genius and madness would be explored with Mercury Uranus. Mm -hmm. And so with the tenure of everything being so fiery and then Mercury Uranus, to make an effort to slow down and to think about things and to gain insight and intuition and to process to get you know insight into into what's you know what's going on this is a very very powerful alignment and where it falls in your chart um that also would be very revealing yeah i forget the degree of uranus mercury but yeah i think it's around 19 and then and then this full moon is on 13 degrees too so both those things would be fun to look at in your chart i have a somebody I, I dearly love she always calls it astrology bingo like bingo it's hitting my chart <laughs> or not Boom. yeah that's a good that's a good way of putting it yeah. and so then um another thing that's uh happening and we're going to be talking about that throughout the summer is that's the triad of transformation there's the pluto neptune sextile and then there's the pluto uranus trine and very shortly, Uranus and Neptune will be in sextile forming a, that blue triangle there. And when summer, summer comes along, we're going to be experiencing that and it's starting to form. We studied it last year and that we're going to flesh that one out. So the times they are changing and it's hard to keep up with how fast things are changing, especially with that Uranus Mercury and then that fire grand trine and then that sun in Gemini, moon in Sagittarius. Good thing we have Saturn and Pisces. Um, sure. <laughs> but uh, I think that watching out for your emotions and being really well grounded in your process super important. Making sure you're um, you're stable in your boat. And uh, we were going to do a tarot card, and we we're going to do it at the beginning, and we forgot. So let's go pick a card. Pick a card. All right, card the best understand this full moon. Oh. oh, the Ten of Swords. 
this is like time flies whether you're having fun or not huh the the fire the 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 sword is the mind huh? we have a lot on our mind oh the ten of swords as uh you know that's you know i think that this could be a very good time if you're really well grounded but if you don't have your feet on the ground and if your boat is taking water, I think this can be a very difficult for me. Mm. And so, you know, we've been talking about the necessity to understand the lessons of Saturn and Pisces and having a strong spiritual practice, strong creative practice, your journaling, your things that keep the boat firmly um on the water not sinking you know those are really important things and if you're not doing that then with all of that fiery energy and all of that mental energy it could be that you experience it in that sense but the ten of sword is also a very interesting time of rebirth what is your experience of the ten of um, swords I'm still just diving into astrology. Um, the tarot, you mean? I mean, yeah, into the tarot. Mm -hmm. And so swords, I think I've been recently in my course studying six, seven, eight was very powerful for swords in Gemini uh, season. And then the 10, to me, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, especially Carol out there, your new wise wisdom, um, with the 10 being a bit of like completion like about to enter i look at it like if the one through ten is the experiences in reality ten is the completion and about to integrate it so maybe there's potential for integration or if you're not going to consciously integrate it then there might be a life circumstance that makes you physically well you know with the ten of of swords it can't get any more complicated than it already has been you know it's the end of the cycle huh you yeah, know, so exactly. it's like, okay, you know, I'll, you know, and, you know, the guy's got 10 swords in his back, you know, and he's lying there. Uh, it's like, okay, you can't really ask much more of him, you know, and the dark skies are coming in. So I think collectively, that could be very accurate picture of what the materialist must be feeling at this time, you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a lot is falling apart. Yeah, it's good, though. It's good. It's the only way we'll change is if we, you know, and that's what the Ten of Sword is like, okay, that's done. It's complete this. Yeah, yeah, we've done that. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. Time to be reborn. Shifting gears. Mm-hmm. And so let's look at the important dates. Mm-hmm. So important dates, the third is the Sagittarius full moon. Then the Venus Neptune water trine. That's gonna be dreamy on the on the full moon. On the third, okay. And then the fifth, Mercury Uranus. So that's on the fifth of June. Just a couple of days later. And keep that in the sixth. Venus comes ingress in the Leo, and then when she's ingress in the Leo, then she's in direct opposition to Pluto. So the six is the is Venus into Leo in direct opposition to Pluto. So five, six, third, fifth, six, really important. And then the twelve, Mercury comes into Gemini. The seventeen, Saturn goes retrograde. And then we're going to have, on the 20th, we're going to have a new moon. Also, uh, uh, in Gemini, followed by the summer solstice. Very good time to check in. You know, the this, this, um, this, the, the year, first half of the year is almost done. The sun's reaching its highest point in the north. And then at the solstice, it'll start moving back south again. So we're approaching a very important natural shift. Twice a year, we have solstices. So this full moon is the last full moon of the first half of the year. Time to make inventory of what you've accomplished for the next for the last six months and what your goals are for the next six months. 
and you know the this is going to be everything that you've planted and worked really hard for all throughout this first half of the year from winter solstice to summer solstice now you're going to be starting a time of harvest of everything you've worked through so it's a, usually a very big breakthrough and when the sun's the days start going shorter and shorter on the other side of the summer solstice that's a time of bringing things back in you know we've been going 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 expanding our territory and then when solstice comes then it starts to bring it in again you know so we're preparing for the winter solstice so that this full moon is really important for that and I think that, um, you know, slow it down because time flies. I like that you're saying it comes like bring it back in at summer solstice and it's the beginning of cancer season, which is coming back home. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Four weeks of pollination season, Gemini. Mm -hmm. And what a beautiful uh, spring it has been so far, huh? Wow. Yeah. So delighted. Here in the Pacific Northwest, it's been quite warm for us. It, it's it's kind of just stabilized uh, mm. to be a very, very nice weather, really. We're blessed. We are. And so you got some medicines for us uh, to go with this. Um... Yeah, this full moon. So mm -hmm. bringing it back into the body. Um, my background's in nutrition and holistic health, but also herb, herbs and tissue salts. And so tissue salts, as you've probably heard me talk about in other videos, um, there's 12 of them in every human body and every body needs all 12 of them, but they also correlate to the astrological signs. And so for Gemini season that we're in right now, Gemini's tissue salt is number five, which is Calimer, traditionally called, or nowadays we call that potassium chloride. Uh, Gemini rules our shoulders, arms, and our peripheral nervous system. So it's that exchange of information. So we use our arms and our shoulders and when we talk a lot or when we're sharing things through writing or sharing things through giving a food to a friend, it's through our arms and our hands and our shoulders that we extend the heart and share that information. And so Gemini is all about sharing information. We've been doing these, you know, for a long time now. And it's it's really fascinating to me. You know, uh, it's really fascinating to me that when you th talk about these ailments, you know, I can really identify with my body is struggling through at uh, with the, the astrological um you know signs that we're in so these are beautiful uh, meditations that uh, diana puts together for us and some uh, uh, tools to uh, support our health thank you diana keep going sorry to interrupt. no i love that you're connecting and witnessing the connection it's beautiful i really love seeing how when the sun shifts it being our, our life force energy you can feel the life force energy shift in in the body and as working on the floor with um holistic health i see it a lot in the collective too so for instance continuing on with uh calimer tissue salt number five it when we see deficiencies of this tissue salt in the body it can look like things um such as headaches so i don't know if you've noticed that there's a lot more headaches around the lately. sluggish liver you know that create you know definitely the sluggish liver and then the swelling um, and the earache. Yeah, definitely all experiencing that, the swollen gland, everything. It's, it's, the, it's the crescendo of the year, huh? It's, uh, it's uh, wow, it's Gemini. Woohoo! Yeah, it's all about, it's kept in all of our glandular systems. So if we're not releasing and transferring information, we're holding on to things. Uh, Gemini is a mutable sign, so it needs to keep moving. And if there's anything of stuck energy happening, then you see pretty severe symptoms. So it can be constipation or swollen lymph nodes, earaches, canker sores, swelling in the feet and legs. If you have these symptoms, potassium chloride could be really supportive for your body right now. And the herbs that help our body in Gemini season are things that would help to regulate our nervous system because Gemini does rule our nervous system. So skullcap, passionflower, Lily of the Valley, which you'll probably notice is out right now. I love how these things often bloom during their season. Uh, flax, parsley, and calamus are also really nourishing herbs that would support your nervous system during this time. And then because it's a full moon, so even though we're in Gemini season for a month, we got a full extra energy on Sagittarius right now, looking at the opposite here. So Sagittarius rules our thighs, which is our main organs of locomotion, so how we get around. 
for most of us. And so um, the tissue salt that's associated with Sagittarius is silica. And silica is how the nutrients get around our body. Um, so it again has to do a bit with our lymphatic system, but our nervous system as well. Silica is really important for having healthy, strong hair, skin, nails, and bones. So things like having um, osteoarthritis or any deterioration of the bone structure, including your teeth, is a, can be a lack of silica. can also help, again, with supporting the liver and making sure there's not excess heat in the liver. Um, and then the lungs, it's very supportive for too. So if there's any bronchitis or uh, pneumonia or any kind of inflammation in the lung lining, um, you'll see that this is a tissue cell that can help that a lot too. And then herbs that support Sagittarius are things that cool the system. Sagittarius can be very hot, it's expansive, ruled by Jupiter. It's all about expansion, but then it's a fire sign. So if that goes out of control, you can see a lot of heat in the body. So plants like argamone, red clover, burdock, chicory, and dandelion are all really nourishing at cooling the system. If you're finding that your body might be on the hot side of things. That can also look like temperament. So maybe a little bit more anger, faster to um, aggravate, aggra aggra aggravation, <laughs> aggravation, 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 <laughs> agitation, well. uh, the mix of aggravation and agitation, aggra aggravation. Yeah. Yeah. So just some plant allies to help you stay grounded in your body during this time. It's easy to not be grounded in the body, but we have these little pieces of earth to walk around in. So it's good to take care of them. I was thinking, you know, when you were talking and how, you know, this is starting to flow pretty well. And then we've got, got all the, these new subscribers and then, you know, the algorithms maybe are recognize it you know, us more. We've been doing this for a year and a half, these new moon, full moon reports. We call them solely lunar reports, um, uh, meditations. And so we are so grateful you're joining us um, and pass this around to your friends and uh, um, don't forget to resource yourself really well. Resource mm -hmm. yourself, we mean going back to the source, you know, going back to where you fill your cup um, to be fresh while all these opportunities are manifesting in front of you. There's so much opportunity for magic in these times. And yet, if we don't take our time, we won't be able to take advantage of it. And things move so fast. Huh? So whether you're having fun or not, time <laughs> flies. So... Thank you for working with me for this long. It's been fun. Thank you for working with me and teaching me. And all these videos are quite fun. I appreciate the feedback and the comments below. And we should probably do a video addressing all the comments and questions as a separate video. We might do that soon. We had uh, a, a bunch of, of uh, new people interested in our work and really loving the table and the movement. Some, but someone in Edmonton thought that it was on ball bearings, but it's just a smooth surface up upon smooth surface. Whoops. Ooh. Go all the way in the corner. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Um, and so, yeah. Um, thanks for joining us and, um, we'll see you next time. Take care. Happy full moon week building. Whoop, whoop.